Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that, may, that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Blessed Trinity, one holy and living God. Amen. Please be seated. Are you familiar with those um, uh, Choose Your Own Adventure children's books? I can't, I can't remember when they became popular. The idea behind them is, is pretty clever, I think. The, the plot would be one of mystery and adventure and written as if you were then the main character. At different points in the storyline, you would come to some kind of significant crossroads and would have to choose which path you would take in order for the story to continue. Sounding something like this. You manage to find your way out of the forest only to encounter dangerous rapids. Up ahead is a rickety bridge and beneath it a canoe. If you want to take the bridge, turn to page 52. If you want to take the canoe, turn to page 37. Get, get the idea? Now, now being a uh, discerning child, yeah, you can read anything you want to into that, <laughs> and it will probably be true. Being a discerning child, I would, of course, check out the consequences for all of the options and choose my adventure retroactively. <laughs> I'd like mark down the best road for Jean, right? And I confess to you and the world um, <laughs> that I often read the Bible in the same fashion. <laughs> Yeah, let's see how this plays out before I commit to the storyline, Jesus. <laughs> right? But the thing is, the thing is, in, in the Christian narrative, we are constantly confronted with decisions that can either reflect abundant life or death. Jesus lays the, out the options very truly in John's Gospel today that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came, Jesus says, that they may have life and have it abundantly. And fortunately, for the most pragmatic sheep among us, we do get to see how it plays out with the Acts of the Apostles. The reading from Acts in the Easter season show us what it looked like once the apostles left their hidey hole and went out into the world. And today's reading is of particular interest to me 
So go ahead and take a look at it. I'm going to read it again. Those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Today's reading is what beloved community looks like. It's about choosing abundant life so that all can experience it. The problem for me is I have a very difficult time getting my childhood pragmatism, now straight up cynicism, let's be honest, out of the way in order to suspend disbelief and embrace the story. Which is funny because as I have grown older, I've eagerly accepted the biblical miracles. Parting the sea, water out of rocks and wine out of water, walking on water, the multiplication of loaves and fish. I am good with all of that. Immaculate conceptions and virgin births, absolutely it could happen. Resurrection from the dead, oh yes please. But Christians holding all things in common, the redistribution of wealth, and everyone is glad about it? Yeah, that never happened. I just don't believe it. Not in this constitutional county. And by the way, this little aside here, I'll even step aside. That's not actually a legal thing. And declaring it so does not make it so and does more harm than good for the community, beloved or otherwise, back in the pulpit. So yes, here in our particular context, these early chapters in Acts are probably the most challenging thing the Bible has for us since the prevailing values around our economy and political and social structures are all about getting ahead. It's power driven, not peace driven. It's selfish, not selfless. It's individualism, not discipleship. We as a society then package that all up together, throw, it, throw in being self-made, and call it the American dream. Furthermore, our history of white domination would have us believe that getting ahead requires intentionally leaving others behind. And siblings, it takes significant significant effort to remove that veil of death that is our caste system. But we are doing the work here at St. Paul's. We are not the first and we are not alone. And that's the spark. That's the spark that keeps drawing me back to the possibility that this adventure story that is the Acts of the Apostles was indeed a reality and can be again if we choose it. God has always partnered with humanity in every miracle story. We're the plan. Remember from Easter? We are not just plan a plan or plan A. We are the plan. There is no plan B. Participate or don't. That's the choice. But know that is a choice of life abundant or death. The apostles were at a crossroads. It was not an easy decision for them. The thief had taken their teacher, an innocent lamb, and tortured and killed him, destroying what appeared to be all hope. They could have given up and joined the way of the world down a path of sin and death, but instead they chose to participate in life abundant. 
They chose God's economy over the human one, and they shared everything. They had all that they needed. And maybe that is just too good to be true, but it doesn't mean that it couldn't happen. Anthropologists and historians would tell us that it has indeed happened. Indigenous or native cultures which have been left alone, meaning that empires and industries haven't stolen or polluted their resources, were and still are able to le live out this reading in Acts. There are cultures with no words for mine or take. The concept isn't even understood. The monastics offer the same way of life, not just for their members, but in hospitality to the community. And this current exploration into Acts living is called new monasticism, and it is growing the church, just like it did in the first century. It is a spirituality that connects instead of isolates and reaches out to the least among us. Choosing life abundant, being part of the Acts adventure, is important to the church. So important it is part of our baptismal covenant. We renewed those vows at Easter, and for those being confirmed or received into the Episcopal Church in June, we'll get asked the questions again by Bishop Bonnie. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers? It's straight out of Acts. And our response? I will, with God's help. And when we do, we will not have to cross our fingers behind our backs, because this statement is not a fiction. Here at St. Paul's, with God's help, we are living out the impossible. Acts adventure and living into beloved community. Even my inner pragmatist can see that it is true, that it is happening. I see it in our worship. I see it in our faith and action ministries of community outreach and justice and change, in our hospitality, in our support of children and families, in our fellowship and in our pastoral care. Just like with the Acts community, there is overwhelming joy in this place. And that doesn't just happen. How many dour churches have you been in? Once only, right? Once only. We had to choose. Standing at the crossroads of a post-resurrection world, we could very well have hunkered down or thrown up our hands, but instead, we came here. And we're doing the work. We're not waiting to see how the story plays out. Instead, we are firmly choosing life abundant, and I cannot wait to see where the adventure takes us. Alleluia, alleluia.